Hi guys, I'm Tineet and welcome to my channel. Today we are painting with watercolour paint month February, which is Flower Iris. I hope you guys enjoy it and please like and subscribe my channel. The first thing I do before I start any painting is to make sure I have all the equipment I need. First of all, I have my calendar printed on 300 grams hot press watercolour paper. I have my Winsor & Newton 12 mini set pocket size paint. I have a palette to mix my paint on. I have a clean glass of water. I've got my tissue paper to dry my paintbrush on and I've got a few different sizes paintbrushes. Everything I used is in the description below. The second thing I do is to start mixing my paint. I would start with the green areas of my painting today. I prefer using three tones of a color when I paint. So for instance, I would have a light, medium and a dark green for the green areas. And as you paint, you can always mix more tones or shades of green. It is important to start with three. I say this because you want your painting to have a three-dimensional effect. If you only paint with one color, it's going to look flat and all the leaves will look the same. When we start painting, we always start with the lightest color. What I sometimes do is to start painting first with the water and then I'll add in my greens. What will happen is the water will be the lightest color and the green will blend into the water. So I don't have to mix a third color. This will act as my third color color. After I've painted my lightest color, either it's mixed with water directly or I've pre-mixed it, while it's still wet, I will go in with my medium and dark colors. It is important that every single leaf or petal that you paint has at least three tones or three shades of green so that you are able to identify that there are different pieces or different petals and leaves. So as you can see what I'm doing now is I'm painting every second petal. This is important because the first petal that I've just painted is still wet and when I paint the second petal right next to it it's going to blend into each other and it's going to become one big petal. What I'm doing now as you can see is I'm painting every second leaf. This is important because the first petal that I just painted is still wet and when I paint the second petal right next to it it's going to blend into each other. The water is going to run into each other. We also call that bleeding. So it is important for you to paint every second leaf. So as you can see I painted the first one now I'm painting the third leaf and once again I'm going in with my light green or my medium green mixed with a bit of water so it will dilute the color to make it lighter so then I have my third color then I go in with my dark green to add in some shading so you can use the shading either way two leaves touches each other so that there is a difference between the two petals or leaves so that you can clearly see the one is casting a shadow on the next one or that at least there is a difference between the two so they don't look exactly the same so for instance so that both the the petals edges aren't the same color and light and then you won't see the difference between the two so it helps to have a darker color to get that difference in between the different petals the second way you use your dark color is for shadows so for instance if one of the the flowers is over the leaf then you would see a darker area this is the shadow so in the shadow areas we're going to use the darker green you can even mix an even darker green with more burnt umber so when i mixed my greens i use my sap green with a little bit of burnt sienna now i like using the burnt sienna and, and sap green together because it gives you a very nice natural green so it gives you more like an olivey green, which is a very nice color. And then you can always add a little bit more burnt sienna or even black to the color, to the green, the sap green, to make it darker for your dark green. You can always add yellow or a little bit of blue to your green to make it a different kind of green. It totally depends on what kind of green you are looking for. This is why the tissue paper is so important, so that you can test out your colors before you start painting, to make sure you are happy with the green color. So when we paint the entire calendar, it I would suggest to have different kinds of greens. So you can either use for your sap green and yellow together, 
and then the next month you can use a little bit of the vermilion green into the sap green or you can add blue in and so on and so forth. It is important to be able to test and play with your colors so that you can see which colors when you mix them works together and which ones you like more. But for instance in this artwork I use the sap green and burnt umber as my dark color. Once you have painted every second leaf you can start painting all the leaves in between. Now make sure that you have a variety of greens. So as you can see the third petal on my right is a darker green than the rest. So this helps me to be able to differentiate between the leaves. You can even add more of a burnt sienna to one of your leaves and yellow. So you can see that there are a lot of different greens that I'm using. So it looks very natural and it all looks good together still. It's not like I have a blue green and a yellow green and it is not matching together. So now that every second leaf is painted, I'm painting all the leaves in between. So they should be dry by now so it wouldn't be a problem to paint in between them. What I like to do is going in with my darker green now so that the lighter greens can stand out. As a rule in art, lighter colors always comes forth and darker colors goes back in the background. So for instance, when you paint something like what we are painting today, the lighter green, paint, uh, the lighter green leaves would be the leaves that is closer to you and the darker leaves are the ones that is further away. Now I've put my hand in one of the wet leaves and it has made a mark beside my painting. So what you can do is you take your clean paintbrush, you wash it and you add some water to the paintbrush. Then you will work on that area as you'd like you would paint with water on this area. Then you will take your serviette or your tissue paper to pick up the remaining water. You can repeat this process until the color or the area where you have messed or spilled your paint is gone. Don't overwork the area. This is very important not to overwork the area. You will notice that sometimes when you paint and you keep on fiddling in an area, your paper will almost break down. It's making little round dots. It looks like it, the paper is getting more texture. This means you are breaking down the paper, you are overworking an area. So what I would suggest when you paint, start painting an area and don't try to fiddle. So start with your lighter color, add in your dark color and then move on. Don't keep on overworking an area and keep on painting and think that the more you paint, the better it, better it will blend. The idea is for the first time around for your lighter color to be wet enough for the darker color to blend into the dark color. If your lighter color has dried before you can add in your darker color, you can add a little bit of water to your paintbrush and paint over the light area and then add your dark green immediately after the light green has been re-wet. Now if you use too little water with this technique, you will Pick up the dry paint, the light dry paint on your paper, off the paper. If you take too much water, you will flood the area and as it dries, it'll make little lines as if you have painted little thin lines on your painting. So what will happen if it's too wet? It'll dry in on the edges quicker then in the middle and then the middle area will have uh, those little lines as if you've drawn it there. Try not to have your painting too wet. Now how you know if your painting is too wet? If you lift your paper and you put it straight in front of you and the water is running down immediately then you know it is too wet. The idea is for your painting to be wet enough for you be able to lift your color, keep it there for three to five seconds without the water running down just yet. So this is how you can see quickly if it is too wet or too dry. When I started with my purple, I like mixing a new purple color for this specific flower. So I used my ultramarine blue color and I mixed in some crimson. 
this will help me to get a bluish purple so it is not a solid purple it's just a it is just a blue that has a purple tint to it and once again as you can see I'm mixing my dark and a medium color and then I'm testing it on my tissue paper what I will do with my lightest color is that I will use my medium color and add it with some water before I start painting so what I would do is I will have a clean paintbrush full of water and just dab it quickly in the medium color and this will help me to get my light color now this flower has some blue and yellow in it so what I would suggest if you're painting a small area as what we are doing now and you need to blend in yellow specifically into any other color I would first paint my yellow and then blend it out into clean water so as you can see I'm painting my yellow and then I'm and I'm taking my semi clean glass of water and blending out with the water so what you can do is you can first paint the water and then the yellow what will happen then is that the yellow area will be bigger and more faded if you first paint your yellow and then paint your water around it and come closer and closer to your yellow your yellow area will the middle area of the yellow will be darker and it will blend out softly into a lighter yellow so I would suggest to first paint your yellow and then go in with your water so if you are painting a large area with a yellow and a different color you can paint both the colors at the same time just because it's easier to control a bigger area if you're painting a smaller area as what we're doing now I suggest to first paint your yellow and then go in with your blue if it was for instance red and blue I would have painted them together even if it's a small area the reason why I would only do this with yellow or if it was a light white area is because yellow tends to disappear very quickly and especially when another color touches the yellow so once all my yellow areas are dried I'm going to go in and start painting with my blue so now since the yellow is already dry it is very important not to paint over the yellow most colors if you paint over it it'll change a little bit but when you paint over yellow you will change it quite a lot because yellow isn't necessarily always a strong pigment color so what I would suggest is to start going in with your water your dirty water once you've painted your dirty water you can go in with your medium blue and blend it into your medium blue so for now once again I'm painting every second petal this is important once again for you to be able to paint it as wet as you'd like and the colors won't blend into each other between the two different petals so as you can see I'm painting around my yellow so I'm wetting the area first I'm going as close as I can to the yellow but I'm not painting over the yellow then once it is wet with water I can go in with my medium color add in the medium areas where it's where it's a little bit darker and then I go in with my darkest color my dark blue only add it to a few areas it is important that you don't overwork the area with your dark blue the dark blue is for that those darkest darkest of shadows you don't want the entire artwork to only be water or light your light color and your dark color it's important to also have your medium color so what you can do as you can see with this petal I first painted it with water and then I added in my dark blue so what you can do once the dark blue touches the water if it's wet enough you can take your clean paintbrush and move the paint around so it is important for you to do this as quick as you can if you take too long the water or the light color will dry and the darker color won't blend necessarily where you would like it it is a it is a quick technique then I started with my second flower. I dipped my paintbrush into the clean water and added only a little bit of light blue to my paintbrush. This will help me to have a light blue color. Then I added my dark blue and I added it around the on the edges of the petal. If you do it this way, the edges will be darker and the inside will be lighter. Then you can clean your paintbrush and move the paint around a little bit. Make sure to keep your yellow clean and don't paint over it. 
If there is a little bit of paint that's going over your yellow, you can quickly wash your paintbrush, dry, semi-dry it and lift off the paint with your paintbrush. So instead of using a tissue paper or serviette or whatever kind of paper you are using to pick up paint, rather use your paintbrush. As you can see, my tissue paper has those little dotted patterns on it. If I would use my tissue paper to pick up paints that or water that is an excess of water, you will leave behind those little small patterns. So rather use your paintbrush. If you also use your paintbrush instead of the tissue paper, you will have more control over the area of where you are picking up the paint. Make sure you only paint every second petal or when you paint petals next to each other that the first petal is already dry. This will help you to make sure that each petal is individual. It will also help you what that once a petal is dry for you to be able to see does it need a lighter area next to it or a darker area with the next petal so that they each look unique. Then when you paint your petals, you will notice that the petals that is closer to you are lighter than the ones that is further away. So it is important to add more dark paint into the petals that is further away. In the areas where the petal meets the yellow on the inside of the flower, that will also be darker. Because it is casting a shadow, then you can use your darker color more definitively. You can also add in more black to that area to make sure it really is dark and that you can clearly see that it is a darker area and that it has a shadow. When you want lighter areas and you only want it to be a, like a light petal without having any dark, I would suggest to use your dirty water and your medium blue. You do not have to use your dark in every single petal. When you paint with your paint brushes, it is very important not to leave them inside the water. What will happen is the wood rots and the paint bristles falls out. Your paint bristles will also start bending because it is laid into water in an arc kind of form. Then your paint bristles will start bending into that form and what you will notice then is that your paint bristles after a while it will all st point in different directions and this is not what we want. So it is important when you use your paint brushes to wash them after you've used them and then take them out of the water. You can also dry them a bit just to get the excess water out. With this petal you can see that I'm painting my lightest color first which is the water with a little bit of medium blue. I paint the entire area so that it is wet enough so that I can blend in my other colors into it. Then I go in with my medium blue and I only add this in the middle area. And the dark blue I will add into the top area so it goes from light to medium to dark blue. So the blending or the weight on weight, the transition between the two colors are seamlessly. We want this transition to be seamlessly. We don't want a line between the light, the medium and the dark. Flowers are very soft and we want to keep that soft motion on every single petal and every single leaf. So it is important for you to have enough paint the first time around for it to be able to blend into each other. What I would also suggest is to use a paintbrush suitable for the area. So how you know it's suitable for the area. If you wet your paintbrush and you can paint the, an, an entire petal with only the one time of putting in water on your paintbrush, then you know the size is correct. If you find you take a smaller paintbrush and you need to go and get water or paint two or three times, then you know your paintbrush is too small. Once again, if the paintbrush is too big, you will find that when you paint, there is an excess of water on the area. So for instance, if you would paint a small petal with a size 12 paintbrush, it'll flood the area and they will almost be 
puddle of water. This is once again what will happen is if you lift the paper, the water will immediately run down. So this is a good indication for you to know what kind of size paintbrush you use. You know, you don't have to have all these different sizes. I usually only paint with two to three sizes paintbrushes. So I like my size four, which I, what I which is what I'm painting with now, but I also have my size one ready. So my size one, I usually use to get in fine details or thin lines. So what you can do is you can either add it in while you're still painting, or you can add in a few darker lines afterwards. My size 12 paintbrush, I'm not using in today's painting, just because this is such a small and fine painting dry you can go in with every other petal once again you will start in with your lightest color you will cover the area so that you know it is wet once the area is wet enough you can go in with your dark color so the petal I'm painting now needs to be darker than the one at the back so that there is a difference between the two so that they don't blend into each other then you can go in with your darker color to cast that shadow Remember to also use light colors. So not the entire petal is dark, just the majority of the petal is dark. Once you feel that most of your petals are painted, step back and have a look at your painting. Make sure that you have different kinds of petals so that all the petals don't blend into each other. So as you can see with mine, you can clearly see there are different petals and that it isn't just one big petal that forms the flower. So each petal is unique and it has either a lighter edges or darker edges or the yellow stands out more so that you can clearly see the difference between the petals. This is one of the most important parts of your painting. If you find that it all kind of just blends in together and you are painting either too light or too dark, you can amend it. If you're painting too light and you find that all the petals are light and there's no dark areas, you can re-wet some of the petals, once again with only a little bit of water and then add in your darker blues. It is very important to have your darker blues. If it is only one tone, you will get very quickly bored of the picture. It is suggested to have more than three tones of a color. Don't be scared to go too dark. Having dark colors makes it more of a three-dimensional artwork instead of having a flat colored image. If you find all your areas is one toned dark, you can always pick up some paint. So how you would do this is you're going to wet your paintbrush. You're going to just dab off the, the excess of water. Your paintbrush shouldn't be so wet that a, a drop of water can drip out of it. It just should be wet enough for you to be able to work on your artwork. What you would do then is on the areas where you want lighter blues. You can take your paintbrush and the same way that you would remove a mark on your paper is what you're going to use now. Then you're going to work on that dark area. You're going to continue painting and you will see that soon your water that you use to put on the paper is starting to turn into the blue. Then you know that the color is lifting off. Once you've done that, you can take your paintbrush, you can dry it and then there will still be an excess of water on your painting. Once your paintbrush is dry, you can lift off more of the color. If you find that it isn't light enough, you can repeat the process by re-wetting your paintbrush, removing the excess of water, working on that light area, and then picking the color up. When you are finished with your entire painting, I usually, what I like doing with paintings as simple as I have today with a very big white background, I like using my splatter method. What you would do is you would take a bigger paintbrush, so you can either use your size 4 or your size 12 paintbrush. You're going to fill it with the color that you've been using. So for instance, you can now in this painting use your yellow or your green or your blue. Then you would take your paintbrush, fill it with the color, put your finger, your index finger about three or five centimeters away from your painting. Then you would going to take your paintbrush on your dominant hand and you're going to 
dab it hard on your index finger. This will make the splatters on your painting. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. You can find these digital copies of the calendar on my Etsy store which is listed below. You can go print them at home. The paper, the paints and the paintbrushes I use is, is all listed in the bio below.